Okay, it is. It's the day of the arthrogram, uh, and I don't want to lie, but I am petrified. I might even be more scared and more nervous of doing this um, than I am of a potential surgery, only because of what I've what I've been reading. Which, so apparently what they're going to do is they're going to inject uh, a bottle, and I've even read as much as a couple of bottles of lidocaine into my shoulder joint, and then they're going to inject the contrast dye into my shoulder joint. So that happens at 11, I have to get there 1045, that happens at 11 a.m., and then I will uh, have the actual MRI itself at about 12 o'clock. So that wasn't as unpleasant as I thought it would be, um, mostly just the anxiety, but, uh, so, went in there, you know, the one thing I can say about Swedish, uh, the entire system, um, and all my experiences with them, especially in dealing with other, uh, doctors over the years, sports doctors, is that, um, it's been top notch, so, you know, for instance, my appointment is at 11, and they bring me in there at, uh, 10.56, I think it was, um, you know, I was out, I was done with the whole thing 25 minutes before they said I would be. Um, you know, those kind of things go a long way in terms of my confidence level in a facility, regardless really of what it, you know, what it is they do or, or things like that. Um, so, uh, there is a tear and I'll know really the extent of it tomorrow. Um, I do have the imaging, so I'm obviously going to take a look at that when I get home. Uh, and compare just against like the studying that I've done um, on this, you know, clearly I'm not a radiologist, I'm not a doctor, but the radiologist, basically, so they take you into this, you know, this overly sterile room, and of course I'm sweating bullets at this point because I don't know what it's going to look like or feel like or anything like that. Um, they put this, this suction thing on your shoulder, and at that point I looked away just because uh, I was just getting so freaked out. I, I, you know, I have a lot of like tattoos and stuff, but um, this kind of feeling of anxiety is totally different. So. Uh, they uh, first inject the lidocaine. He said he was going to give me a lot. I told him I, I was freaking out about the whole thing. So he said that he was going to give me a lot. And I think he did because it, it didn't end up hurting nearly as bad as I thought it would. Um, so it gives me the lidocaine. And then he injected the dye. And uh, it was actually, he said, let me know if you feel any pain. You'll probably feel some tightness or some pressure, but, but you shouldn't feel pain. Uh, I didn't feel pain. Um, I just felt uh, kind of tight, you know, really like, like not like tight after a workout, but uh, just sort of tight. I don't know, tough to explain. Anyway, so uh, then they redo an x-ray um, there because they did an x-ray before. Then they do an x-ray after the injection and uh, you could see all the dye that was floating from my shoulder joint into my clavicle, um, which he said is pretty consistent with a tear. He said, you have something, something's going on. There's some kind of a tear there, but the MRI would really reveal what the extent of it was. So I go and I do the MRI. Um, that wasn't too bad either, except for when they I had to hold my arm overhead for about four minutes, um, which uh, that's, the, uh, that's the really uncomfortable position for me. So did that and, um, yeah, so uh, he said that he could tell there was a tear. I have the imaging. I'm going to find out for sure the extent of it tomorrow, at least as far as the imaging will show. And then we'll go from there. Um, I do think that it's pretty, uh, I don't know, walking around for almost three months now with a tear in my shoulder and functioning pretty well. Um, I don't know. I, I, I think it's pretty cool. So I guess we'll see what the next steps are. Um, you know, can't be can't be too upset about it. It happened uh, while doing something that I love, um, and I've got a story to tell. So as I've said over the last couple of months, I have been studying what a slap tear looks like on uh, on imaging. You know, you can just just Google it, right? Uh, Google slap tear. They all look very very straightforward. Um, they all look exactly the same. So this is a Googled. Uh, slap tear and as you can see it has this frayed piece up here in the upper right hand uh, part which is the tear and then you look at mine right there is the frayed part on mine so it is definitely torn apart uh, so I guess you know tomorrow we'll find out really how much but you know this is where we're sitting right now so really just confirming kind of what I already knew you know a bummer but uh, we're going to run down to Industrious and talk to, talk to Molly, talk to Steve-O, uh, you know, give him an update. So that's what I got.
All right, we are back at the doctor. Uh, we're gonna go talk to Dr. Jurek here in the next few minutes. Um, gotta be inside in 11 minutes, so got here just a little bit early, uh, and then we will see what's coming next. So, I got my official diagnosis a couple of hours ago. Um, again, for the last few months, I've expected a labrum tear, or a slap tear, or some kind of a bicep issue. And spent all this time researching slap tear repairs, bicep tenodesis, um, and you know, thinking that especially with the tenodesis uh, surgery, you know, that we're looking at a four to five month, three to four month, something like that, full recovery. Um, turns out uh, the that the actual uh, what happened is that um, the humeral anterior uh, I have a torn anterior inferior glenohumeral ligament uh, tear so right about there um, doctor explained that uh, it's near the ax axillary nerve uh, which essentially was having an issue which is why I was getting the numbness in my fingers going on um, you know the most disheartening thing about all this is just that uh, Oh, and then I have a, a bone bruise in my uh, in my humerus as well. So, she said that's not, not too big of a deal. It says fracture on the MRI report. She says she doesn't uh, believe that based on what she's looking at. Um, but nevertheless, uh, you know, recovery again, I was thinking three to four months, four to five months, something like that. Um, eight months of recovery. Uh, it's gonna be five to six months before post-op, before I can hold the bar overhead. It's gonna be two to three months before I can squat with a bar on my back, um, and six weeks in a sling, which is about double of what I thought uh, initially. So, you know, I'm kind of coming to terms with all this stuff and just trying to deal with it. Um, you know, it's a lot worse than I thought, and it's a lot worse than she had thought. Uh, so, I don't know, kind of a bummer way to end this, but um, we're gonna do some squatting today. The plan is to do 10 by three at 120 kilos on the safety squat bar. You know, we'll see. I mean, it's not not too great of a day, so uh, it's all going to come down to when it is that I want to have surgery. I've got some upcoming vacations. I'd love to do it in the next couple of weeks, which is an option. Um, but uh, I don't know. It's either going to be in the next couple of weeks, or it's going to be maybe in April, or it's not going to be until late this year, early next year. So it just kind of depends on when I can fit things in um, with travel and work and and everything like that. So. Uh, signing off for now, that's what we have, so at least we have a diagnosis. Uh, again, a Hagel, H-A-G-L ligament uh, tear exists right about here. Um, so, has to do with the numbing in my fingers. Uh, that's answered too, at least. So, that'll be it.